When you download the templates, they'll be in a zip file. So the first thing you're going to have to do is to unzip them. Now I've downloaded mine to my desktop. Yours might be in your downloads folder. And so I'm just going to double click on mine to unzip it. You may need to uh, right click and extract them if you're on a PC, but I've got them unzipped now. And then here's the unzipped folder. You'll see there are templates for Design Space, Silhouette, and Word. The Canva template is a separate link and it's used a little bit differently. In this tutorial, I'll be using the template for Cricut Design Space. Click on the drop down arrow for Design Space and you'll find a PDF with some detailed instructions that you can print out and follow along with, and also the template. The template's in SVG format and you'll want to upload that to Design Space along with any other design elements that you want to use. I'm going to use these, um, this clip art from the Little Princess birthday clip art and some patterns that are already in Design Space. So I've already uploaded what I want to use. If you needed to upload it, you just click on upload and upload image and find the um, images you want to use. Now, all of this, the happy birthday, the cupcake, the balloons, the unicorn and the little princess, that all came from the, uh, from the clip art set I just showed you. This UPC was uploaded from a file that I found on the internet. I just searched for a um, public domain UPC. And I'll give you the link to that in the blog post that goes along with this tutorial. So I've uploaded that to Design Space as well. So here's where I've got the template already uploaded to Cricut Design Space. And I want to select it and then add it to the canvas. I'm going to move this over to where it's at, oh, about one inch and one inch just to check it. You want to make sure that when it imports, it imports at eight and a half inches tall and 11 inches wide. It doesn't really matter where it shows up on the screen because in order to print this size from Cricut Design Space, we're going to have to take a screenshot of it. So I'm just putting it in a position where I can work with it more readily. Everything is in layers and one the text is in one layer. So just kind of familiarize yourself with it. Look at the top, the bottom, the front. That's all pretty self-explanatory. These edges over here on the left and the right are where we're going to glue the wrapper together. And then this part that's marked side, that's the area that ends up on the side of your bag when the wrapper is um, glued in place. So if you've got some important design elements that you want to, you know, be front and center, you don't want those to wrap around the side. You can still put uh, graphic elements on the side. They're just not going to be as visible as they would be on the front or the back. Now you'll see that over here, what's on the left side of the template says back right. What's on the right side of the template says back left. And that's a little bit, that, that can be a little bit hard to wrap your mind around. But if you think about it, you're going to turn this over and you're going to wrap it. So what's here on the left is going to end up on the right at the back. What's here on the right is going to end up on the back left. That'll make more sense to you when you see um, the, the assembly part of the video. But just so you know that um, you're, you're going to want to orient your design so that you're thinking about this being the right and I mean this being the left and this being the right. So let's get started designing. 
We don't need to see that text layer anymore. So you can just hide it. And now we've got our background, our top and bottom border, and our front and left and right. You do not have to use the top and bottom border. You could make your bag all just one color or pattern with your uh, clip art on top of it, but it just kind of adds some extra interest. So the first thing we're going to select is the background layer. It's this yellow layer. So if I click on it, I'm going to change this to print then cut. We're not going to print then cut it, but that is how I will be able to change to a pattern here. So I'm just going to scroll down through some of the patterns that are already here and they'll slowly populate. You can just choose one you like. I'm going to use this one right here. And then I want to make the top and the bottom border in kind of a color that's going to coordinate. So I will click on this first one here, hold down my shift key, click on the next one. So that's going to be my top and my bottom border. And that's not going to be a pattern, so I could just change to something that's material colors to match. If I wanted a pattern in it, again, I would need to change to um, a print, then cut. So let's just pick out a color we like. If you want to go into the advanced, you can change your shade just a little bit. Like kind of this dusty purple here. Okay, now let's add our clip art. So I'm just going to go back over to where I had the upload and hold down my shift key. Click on all of these design elements and add them to my canvas. Now you'll see when they open, they're pretty big. So let me just move those out of the way. They're also all stacked on top of one another. But I can select them individually. So I want to put the princess first. So let me select her and see these all already came in as as print then cut because that's how I uploaded them. So let me select the princess. Put her up here in the middle. She's going to be on the front of my bag. And she doesn't need to be that big. You can resize by just clicking and dragging on the corner handles. You're just going to want to make sure that this little symbol shows as locked because you want the height and the width to change proportionately. Or if you know what size you want, you can just enter it up here in your toolbar. Again, make sure this lock is locked. So let's say we want her. Oh, um, we'll just start with two inches wide and let's see what that does. And then I want to make her a little bit bigger. I think I want to get her just as big as I possibly can. And then I want to add the happy birthday words. Again, I think I'll just use this up here, make it three inches. And 
Now, I don't really like the scale of that pattern now. I, I want it a little bit smaller so I see some more detail of the pattern. So I'm going to click on this print, then cut layer that is the, the background there. And go up here to my pattern and click on Edit Pattern. See, the scale here is at 220, and I really want it at 100. I'm not sure exactly what happened to that, because it was at 100 before, I thought. So let's see if we can fix that. Sometimes it doesn't want to take effect, and so I'm just going to get back down here close to 100 on the slider. And then click on the X here and hopefully it will take effect. And that is just not changing for me. Let me see what happens if I change it back from, go back to basic, change it back to print and cut. And let's see if that helps. I'm going to have to go select the pattern again, find it. Okay, now it's there at 100%. Let's hope it stays that way. Now I really want this happy birthday to show up rather than just blending in and getting lost in the background. So I'm gonna add an offset to that. So I'm just gonna click on offset. I'm gonna change it to about 0 0.1 apply. And you'll see it created that offset around there. And I'm going to fill that offset with white so that it really makes uh, the happy birthday text stand out. So once it's selected, I'm going to change it to basic and then make the color white. And now we don't want that black line around it. So if I go over here and I change it back to a print and cut, it will no longer uh, have the black line around it. So you want to make sure that these two layers are together. I'm going to group those together and I'm going to unhide my little guide here. Maybe put this more like this because I don't want it to cover up all of her. I think I'll put it over maybe like this and make her just a tad bit bigger. It's not going to hurt if her little crown's up in there. And something like that. Now when I hide that blue placement rectangle, you'll see that that shows up a little bit better. Now let's add some more of our graphics to the template here. So how about we add the unicorn and the cupcake. Let's put this up here. I'm just going to resize and place these I'll probably speed up the video just a little bit so you can see. So I like the way that's looking, but I've got a couple of more things I want to do. Remember how I told you this is the back right and this is the back left. So I'm going to look at this as if I was looking at the left hand side of the chip bag. And I'm going to rotate things just a little bit just to give it a little interest. 
not a lot. And then I'm going to hide those uh, placement rectangles. And I've only got one problem now. Because this barcode is a transparent graphic, you can see that pattern behind it. So I need something that's gonna make it stand out, kind of like I did the offset here. So I am going to draw a rectangle around it. So I'm gonna go over here in my shapes, pick a square with square corners. Um, you could use rounded corners if you want. I'm gonna change that to a white fill. And then I'm gonna change it to a print and cut so I get rid of those um, black lines. Now it shows the black lines when I've got it selected, but when I deselect it, it doesn't show the black lines. I'm gonna put it right over here. I don't want it to cover up my um, barcode. I want it to actually be behind it. So I need to move it under that layer that has the barcode on it. Now it's not, white big enough and at, whereas before I wanted to, on my graphics to have that aspect ratio locked so that my width and my height change proportionately this time I want it unlocked because I actually need to just stretch this a little bit this way without making it um taller so I'm going to, uh, it goes back to lock. So I want to make sure it's not locked. Uh, whoops. Now they're grouped together and I don't want that. Hold on. Let me undo. Let's move this down here where we can see it a little better. Let's see what's happening here. So let's put it over on top of that. And you know, it might be easier for the moment to change this to a darker color so we can really see how it's lining up. So right now we can tell that that is still not as large as we need it to be. So let me just click on that, make sure that's unlocked, drag that over. So now I wanna make sure they're aligned. So I will just select both of them, go up here to align and center them horizontally and vertically. Then let me change that back to white. And I will group them together. Make sure I don't have my balloon selected. I'm going to select both of them. group them together, and then let me show that alignment guide again. Put it back on there. Maybe make it just a tiny bit smaller. And then I will hide those alignments. Now because, like I said earlier, we cannot print this size direct from Cricut Design Space. I'm going to take a screenshot of it and then uh, print it out like that. Now I do see right now that I have some black lines on my um, borders here. And it's probably because those right now are set to a basic cut rather than a uh, print and cut. So let me change those to a print and cut. And now we don't have those black lines. So on my Mac, I just hit uh, Shift Command 4 and I'll get right up there to the edge and take a screenshot. That will save it as a PNG to my hard drive and I'm ready to print it out and create my custom chip bag.
Now that we've got the wrappers printed out, we're ready to assemble the chip bags. I have several designs here that I've made and printed out. And um, I printed all of these on this Koala Inkjet Glossy Photo Paper. It's really the one that I prefer for chip bags. Now I have also used this uh, Pen and Gear, which you get at Walmart, um, to, to do some chip bags and it did fine. It's just a little thicker and also I have found that when I was using it um, both for the chip bags and for print and cuts that it um, sometimes the image will kind of scratch off a little bit but it, it works okay if you know especially for something that you're good just going to um, really unwrap and throw away yeah, you could also use plain paper you could use cardstock although cardstock might be a little thick but you could use some uh, plain uh, just plain printer paper, you could use brochure paper, all kinds of different options. So if you uh, can't find this um, or you don't have time to order it from Amazon, which is where I got mine, then uh, just use, you, use what you have. Use what's readily available. Putting them together is really very easy. You just need some adhesive and it they fit these one ounce chip bags. Now you'll see that all of these are one ounce, these right here, although they're all a little bit different shape, you know. This is a little bit bigger than these, and these are a little bit smaller. All those are one ounce. This popcorn is a five eighth ounce bag, but it fits as well. You don't have to use pre-bagged uh, chips. You could use candy or small toys. You could um, put your own treats inside plastic Ziploc bags, just whatever. The sky's the limit. You get, to, you get to be the creative genius behind your project. You're going to need some adhesive. You can use a, a liquid glue, a tape runner. A tape runner like this one right here, it's kind of big and unwieldy for doing the final seal, and you'll see what I mean about that in just a little bit. But the one, uh, you well, you could also use hot glue. I don't, I don't really like hot glue as much, but you could use hot glue. Or you could use a glue stick. Just experiment. But what I really like to use is this double-sided adhesive. So it comes on a roll. You can get it at craft stores like Hobby Lobby or you can get larger rolls at uh, scrapbook.com. And so when you roll it off, the sticky is on this side first, but then it has this paper liner you pull off. And you'll see why I like that better. Uh, for an extra added touch, you can use a paper crimper. I've got the one that's straight. It does come in other designs, but for this project, you would want the straight one don't have to have it. It just adds a nice finishing touch and makes it look more like a real chip bag. Some people like to trim theirs off. I don't. I just use the whole eight and a half by 11 sheet and let's see how that works. Now these are going to wrap around your chips like, like so and it'll be a pretty tight fit. So you can use this double-sided adhesive on all three parts, or um, you can put some other kind of adhesive here. But I'm going to show you what I do. If I had printed this out and it still had white lines, I would just use those white lines. Usually they're about a quarter of an inch and as my guide. But since this one was printed borderless, I'm just going to run this adhesive right along here. Doesn't matter whether you put it on the left or the right, but you only want to put it on one side. I'll just trim that off. And it doesn't have to be as long as the, um, the border here, but pretty close. Now, before 
I um, wrap this around and seal it, I'm going to go ahead and put some adhesive right here in the center. So I want it to cover that bottom part. Just put it right there. And right here, you could use double stick tape too, but this paper liner is what really makes it nice. Okay, so I'm going to roll this around. And just kind of figure out. I'm not going to fold it, but I'm just going to kind of you know, get it in place there. Match up those edges. And then I'm going to peel off the paper liner from the bottom. And that's what I like about this because I'm not having to reach in here and manipulate that around. center. I'll seal that up. Slip my bag in here. And peel off the paper liner from the top. Top one is always the one where you've got to take just a little bit of extra time because you're working around that bag that's already in there. But see how easy that is with the um, the double-sided adhesive roll. It you don't have any liquid glue to mess with. You've got a chance to. Um, you know, position it well, and you can put the adhesive on there before you uh, actually stick it down because it has that paper liner. Now to use this crimper, you open it up and there's, there's these two rollers in there and you're going to slip that paper in there if we can get a good camera angle on it. And then close it down. And then turn it counterclockwise to start. I don't think I caught mine in there. Let's do this again. Always a lot harder to do on the camera. Okay, maybe if I turn it this way, I think that would help. Okay, press it in there, close it down. Now I'm going to... Ha! Okay, here we go again. I'm doing it upside down and it's... Okay. Close it. Barely, let me turn this back around now. Counterclockwise, which is actually towards you and then away from you. And just go down there a little bit. And then out. You've got a nice little crimp there. Now let's see if I can do this other one. Clamp it 
down. Just a little bit to start and then away from you. You can kind of see when it gets to the top of that. And then you got a cute little chip bag. You want to see me do one without the double stick tape or the double sided adhesive? We can do that too. It's just a little bit more. Um, we have to kind of move your, your wrist around there a little bit. So let's put this along here. Now that's a wider strip of tape. So it ends up covering up just a little bit more of our design. Okay. Now I'm going to have that kind of in the middle there. And I will just put Some adhesive in there. I did um, read that the hot glue works, but it's a little harder for kids to tear open. So you might keep that in mind. So just make sure you've got adhesive all along there. Seal that up. Make sure that your piece is stuck down. Let's try this one. See how it does. Crimping it will help it kind of stay closed too. All right, let's again. You can. Depends on how coordinated you are. If you can roll it along in there, that's great. For me, it works better just to kind of go along like this and make sure I've got it all the way. get sealed down. Now that edge, it'll either be, I've got some adhesive there and it's, that edge right there will be crimped, but if you don't like it, you could just take it and trim it evenly. in the crimper. There you go. I hope you'll try this project out for yourself. Make some custom chip bags for either a pool party, a birthday party, bridal shower, 
uh, Halloween. I think they'd be fun to put treats in for Halloween, whatever you want to do. And I'd love it if you would come share your projects with me over in my Facebook group. That's the Silhouette Crafters by Design Facebook group. And as always, thank you for watching and have a great day.